the idea of the human soul is that every soul is born with sin. Because Adam messed up, and now he's on earth, he has to suffer, and the wage of sin is death. And so every soul that is born, according to Christianity, is born as a sinner. <clears throat> In Hinduism, every sin, uh, every soul, goes from one person to the next person according to how they lived their previous life. So if you were very good, you become a human being. If you were very bad, you become a cockroach. And this is how other religions see the human soul. In Islam, we believe the idea of fitrah. The Prophet said, Kullu ala fitra. Every human being is born upon its natural disposition. Muslim, non-Muslim, everyone has the same, what? Basic soul. Okay. Now, this soul can get corrupted, or this soul can become enlightened. This is what we're going to talk about today. How does this soul become corrupted, and how does this soul become enlightened is the topic of discussion that we're going to have. <clears throat> In order to understand the effect of the soul, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they are deaf, they are dumb, they are blind, what does Allah mean? What, are, what, is, what is it that they don't see? What is it that they're blind? Because Abu Lahab had eyes to see with, just as I have eyes to see with. There's no, not much difference there. So what is he that he is blind from? What is it that he can't hear? What is it that his brain can't process? So this is what we're going to try to understand in our first part of our discussion today. And the way I'd like to frame this discussion is by saying that if we look at the sky, you get two responses. You can have two responses by looking at the cosmos, at the universe. One is you can look at the sun, for example. You can look at the moon. You can look at the sun and see how far it is from Earth, how much heat the sun has. You can look at the moon and calculate how big the moon is, how much the reflection of the moon comes to the Earth. And we can calculate what it would take for a human being to take a rocket to go to the moon. A person who is able to see the sun, the stars, and the moon, but does not see Allah, is blind. He's seeing the universe. He sees the star. He can even tell you how far the star is, is from you. He can tell you how hot the sun is. He can tell you qualities of the moon. But he can see this cosmos and he can't see Allah. And there's another person. He may not be able to measure the distance of the moon or how big the moon is compared to the earth. Or he may not be able to tell you how hot the sun is. But when he looks at the cosmos, it becomes obviously clear to him that there is a designer behind this. There's someone who designed this. Someone who made this. So he looks at the same thing as this other person sees, but this person doesn't see Allah, and this other person, he sees Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this phenomenon, this phenomenon in Quran is best described in Surah Al-Imran in Ayah 190 to 193. And I've talked about these verses before, but these verses are so deep that it comes back over and over again. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ And in the alteration of the day and the night, the آيَاتٍ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ There are signs for people who understand. الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهِ Those people who remember Allah. قِيَامًا وَقْرُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ Standing and sitting and lying on their sides. What do they do? They have fikr, they ponder, they reflect upon the creation of the heavens and the earth. Because when they look at the heavens and the earth, it reminds them of what? Reminds them of Allah. This is why Allah says, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقْرُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا 
Oh Allah, you've not created all this without any purpose. Another person, he looks at the same sun and the moon and the stars and the universe and the galaxies and says, this has no purpose. It's just empty space. It's just randomness. He can't see. So Allah says, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقْعُودًا وَعَلَىٰ جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَعْضِلَ سُبْحَانَكَ Allah, you are perfect. A person sees the creation of Allah and he sees, he doesn't have to be Muslim, mind you, because the soul is the same. The reaction is the same. And so he can be a non-Muslim and he looks at the creation of Allah and he says, Subhanak, Allah, you are perfect. God is perfect. Look at his creation. And another person, he looks at the same universe. Like Nietzsche, the philosopher who said, we went to the moon, we didn't find God. God is, there's no God. You look at the same universe and you see no God. And another person, he sees the universe and he sees the perfection of God. So one person has, is able to see things with basira, and another person, he's blind. Because of the state, why? Because of the state of his fitra, because of the state of his soul, because of the state of the nur that is within him. So now let me describe this apparatus that I've described before, but in a little bit more detail today. <clears throat> so we went through these verses. Indeed, in the creation of the heaven and the earth, and the alteration of the day and the night, there are signs for people who have pure hearts. If you have a pure heart, then your state of your heart will be two. You will have dhikr and fikr. You will have dhikr. Why you have dhikr? I'll explain, and why you have fikr, I'll explain, and what is in between this, I'll explain in a second. الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقْعُودًا وَعَلَىٰ جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this, the heart apparatus in this way, and it's a very great simile to understand. Allah says, اللَّهُ نُورُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. Because the mu'min, when he sees with his fitrah, when his fitrah is in the normal, when his heart is healthy, his soul is healthy, then when he looks at the universe, he can see Allah. He's not blind to Allah. So Allah says, Allahu nuru samawati wal ard, mathala nurihi, the example of this light that helps give him, gives him this ability to see reality. Not just appearances, because if you look at the sun, you're just looking at appearances. And if you look at the moon, you're just looking at appearances. And you don't see Allah, you don't see reality. So Allah says, Allahu nuru samawati wal ard, mafala nurihi ka mishkatin fiha misbah. You see, there's a light, and around the light there is a glass, right? Now, this glass, if it is clean, the light can come out, right? So Allah says, Allahu nuru samawati wal ard, mafala nurihi ka mishkatin fiha misbah, al misbahu fi zujaja. There is a light, a lamp, and the lamp is covered by a shining bright glass. You know, because when the glass is clean, then it looks what? Shiny. Right? So Allah says, Zujajatun ka annaha kauka bun durri yu yu padu min shajaratin mubarakatin zaytuna. Then zaytun is different. The glass is shining like a star because it's so clean. What happens to the human heart? You have the soul where there is the light, but the glass gets dirty. The glass gets dirty, and you can't even do what we call self-talk. You know how you talk to yourself? Well, if you're not, if a part of you is this part of you is not talking to you then you become dumb. You can't see the truth and you can't even talk, you can't even tell yourself that look, this is Allah who created this. You, because of the light, because of the glass being dirty, the light does not pass through the glass to tell you what it is that you're going, what you should be seeing. So you become blind. And there, you know, so, the, so you're, you're then not able to see the universe with the fitrah of the human heart. And so Allah says, 
كمشكات فيها مصباح المصباح فيه زجاجة الزجاجة كأنها كوكب ذري This glass should be so clean that the light that comes out of it talks to you. That that light illuminates you. It illuminates your mind and your eyes and your ears. And you're able to look at the universe and you're able to say spontaneously, without any hesitation, without any second thought, you're able to look at the universe and you're able to say, Subhanallah. Because Subhanallah is for Allah's creation, Allah's perfection in His creation. But the dirtier the, the, the glass is, then what will happen? You won't be able to, you will look at the universe, but you will see nothing. You'll see just empty space. Please come forward. So what are we to do? The process of cleaning the glass is by a, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The process of cleaning the ga glass is the dhikr of Allah. And the, the glass is dirty because of our sins. The more sins we do, the more there is. The Prophet said, when you do a sin, it puts a black spot on your heart. And when you do another sin, another black spot is put on the heart. And the Prophet continues to tell us, this can continue until the whole heart becomes. It's like that glass has now become dirty and you need to make it clean. So that the inner fitra, the light that is there, becomes, is able to illuminate itself. When there is something that's really, there's a glass and it's really dirty, in the beginning when the window is really, really dirty, you actually have to put more effort at that time, in the beginning to what? To clean it, you need more effort at that time. This is why when you find that your heart is more involved in sin, then at that time you have to in, in, get involved in more purifying. The, it takes harder work. Harder time to clean the glass. Then there comes a time where, in, at that time, when that is there, that situation is there, it's hard to do dhikr of Allah. It's hard to sit down and remember Allah. Because it's, you don't, you're not communicating, you're not able to see the light, so you don't see the purpose. Why am I sitting down and saying la ilaha illallah? Or why am I sitting down and reading Quran? What's the purpose? You don't see it. Because your glass is dirty and the light's not communicating with you. And it's hard to do it at that time. To remember Allah at that time is difficult. But as you clean, continue to clean the glass, it becomes easier and easier and easier to remember Allah because that light now illuminates you. It becomes part of you and it becomes easier for you to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now there's another part to this. Cleaning the glass is done by the adhkar of Allah, by the remembrance of Allah. But there's another aspect to this that's more important. And by, mind you, the greatest dhikr, the greatest adhkar is Qur'an. Adhkar, the remembrance is what? Qur'an. Now, the light that is inside your heart, and if the glass is clean, or even if it is relatively clean. But there's a light on the outside. And that light that is on the outside, if the, it meets with the light that is on the inside, then it illuminates the person completely. And this is what Allah mentions in the next part of the verse. كَأَنَّهَا كَوْكَبٌ ذُرِّيٌّ يُقَدُ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ مُبَارَكَةٍ This light the oil that is of that light, this oil, meaning this, this fitra of yours, your nature, is nor of the east nor of the west. Meaning, this fitra of yours is not a byproduct of cause and effect world. It comes from what we call alim al amr which I'm not going to explain to you today. But the ruh is from another world, outside the world of time and, the world of time and space. The ruh is from another world. Okay? The ruh it comes into this world and resides within us, but it is not part of this world. And so, Allah says, "Zaytuna din la sharqiyatin wa la gharbiya yakalu zaytuha yudiu wa lam lam tam sasunar nurun ala nur." When the ayat of Allah are read to you, the signs of Allah, the Quran is read to you, and you understand it. 
then if your heart is clean, and because Islam is a religion of nature, it tells you things according to how they should be according to nature. If your heart is clean, and the light is emanating from you, then you will be in a state of what we call human disposition, in the state of fitrah, in a state of goodness, where if you see a poor person, it bothers you. If somebody is suffering, it bothers you. If you see the sky, you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that fitrah is there, that human nature is there, it's alive. And when you read the Qur'an, then that light touches this light, and it makes you illuminated multiple times more. Versus if that light is not emanating, and even if you touch your Qur'an with your heart with the Qur'an, meaning if you're reading Qur'an, and if you especially don't understand it, but then it doesn't have that effect. It doesn't illuminate you. Allah, ladina, Allah is the wali. Allah is the friend of the people who believe. Allah, ladina amanu, min al ila nur. Allah is the friend of the believers. He takes them out of many darknesses into light upon light upon light upon light. How does that happen? That happens by having a fresh heart, by having a clean heart by having an innocent heart, by having a heart that feels the pain of injustice, by having a heart that feels the pain of other people's suffering. A heart, that same heart, that feels the suffering of others, when it looks to the sky, it can also see Allah. Because that's the clean heart. And that heart that doesn't see Allah in the sky, then he doesn't feel the sufferings of others. And he doesn't care about justice. Right? And so then you have companies like iPhones that create these technologies by abusing child labor. I don't know if you read this. The, the work that they make these people do in, in China, the, chi the children, make them work 12 hours, 13 hours to make these iPhones. Why does it happen? It happens because these people don't have that natural fitra. Making a child work. The, the, the chocolate company Nestle, you know Nestle, you all know Nestle, right? Yeah. Same thing, child abuse, child labor, making, making co children outside the country work extra long hours in doing child labor. Same thing with clothing companies, these Gucci's and all of these different companies, child abuse, child labor. How do they do that? They, they may be able to see, tell you how big the sun is and how hot the sun is and how far away the sun is and when the sun will become a red giant and when the sun will finally die off, they can tell you all this. They can tell you how far the moon is. But they look at all of this and they can't see Allah. Right? And I'll end with this example. I have a few minutes, inshallah, I have six minutes. So I'll do my second khutbah, inshallah, and then I'll give you this other example. Alhamdulillah, نحمده نستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساء من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد. There was a lot more to say, but I'm going to finish with this example. Let's say there is a beautiful book. And the king has this book. It's a beautiful book, and the king gives it to two groups of people. He gives it to the philosopher scientist. Tell me what tell me about this book. And he gives it to another people. Tell me what this tell me about this book. And at the end, give me a report about what this book says. So the philosopher scientist takes the book. And he starts measuring all the jewels in the book, telling you about all these precious stones in this book. And he gives a report to the king that, look, this book has these types of stones, they're so precious, they are, this is their value, this is how much they weigh, and the letters of the book, and the, you know, they're made out of these precious stones. And another person, he didn't go so much into details about what are the precious stones, or how much they weighed. 
but he, he actually read what the message of those the book was. What was it saying? What was the point of the book? Why was it why was it made into the point into a book in the first place? And so the other people they say, well, the message of this book is such and such and such and such. The, the king looks at the people who were able to measure the stone and he says, you missed the whole point. You missed the point of why I had this book. You weren't even able to tell me what was the message of this book. And so the relation, what brings the heart into illumination is by understanding that the whole universe is a book of Allah. Everything is the word of Allah. Kun, right? إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا فَيَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُنْ This whole universe, اِقْرَأْ بِاسْمِ رَبِّكَ الَّذِي خَلَقْ Read in the name of your Lord who created. And this is why Ikra is mentioned twice. The first Ikra is for the creation, and the second Ikra is for the qalam, for the reading of the book. Ikra, bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min ala. Ikra, wa rabbuka al-akram alladhi allama al-qalam. If you read the Qur'an, it is only helpful if you're able to also read the universe. But you can't read the universe. You can't read this universe if your heart is corrupt. You'll see nothing. You won't see Allah. You'll see the sun and the moon, but you won't see Allah. You won't be able to decode it. Right? And so these two things. This is why when you read Quran, Quran points you to where? To the universe. Right? And to the history of the performer prophets. This is what Shaulillah Muhaddas Dilmi in his uh, famous Asul al Tafsir, Fawzul Kabir fi Asul al Tafsir, when he talks about the Asuls of Tafsir, he, he talks about these are the two main methods of Quran. Does give me Ayyamillah, reminding people by the days of Allah, meaning the days of the prophets and what happened with the prophets and the warning of the prophets and what happened to them, those who responded to the call of the prophet and those who rejected the call of the prophet, and tazkir bi ala illa, and the tazkir by looking at the universe and the creation of Allah. These are the two basic methods of the Quran to bring a person's heart to, to back to fitrah, back to nature. So what is the lesson for us? You cannot really process the book, or you cannot, you, can, you have to clean the heart, and then to get the light to actually hit your heart. Nurun ala nur, the light that's within and the light that is out. Nurun ala nur. Then it becomes light upon light. This happens when you actually are beginning to understand the Quran. When you're able to understand the message. When you're able to understand the, the divine beauty in which it is recited, the tone and the rhythm it's recited in, and the effect it has on your personality, how it begun, begun, begins to permeate through your personality, transform your personality. So I challenge everyone to do azkar, to clean the glass. That's the purpose of the azkar. And number two, to read Quran to make that light touch your heart and to transform your personality. So we'll end with this. And... Uh, we will inshallah have announcements in just a few minutes. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa fi al-adhab al-nar. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa fi al-adhab al-nar. Rabbana ghalamna anfusna wa illam taghfir lana wa turhamna lana kunna min al-khasirin. Allahumma ghfir lana wa arhamna. Allahumma arhamna bin Qur'an al-Azim. Wa ja'alhu lana imama wa nura wa huda wa rahma. Allahumma ya dafi al-baliyat. ارحمنا يا ارحم الراحمين يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم اغفر لنا اللهم صل وسلم على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن الله يعبركم don't stand up we have announcement to make and then in shall after that stand up when I come to the prayer area إن الله يعملكم بالأذن والإحسان وإنتاء ذي القربى وينهاء عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم فاستجب لكم فأقيموا الصلاة Please move forward, there's a lot of space inside Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله